What's up, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, my name is Matt, and this is Hidden Light, and today we're doing a user-requested video. That's right, something you wanted me to do a video on. We're talking about file prep for piezography, what piezography is, how piezography works, piezography, everything. Now, let me start this video by saying I am not an expert. I am a person who uses the system both for positive and for negative but I'm not trained by them, I'm not sponsored by them, I buy their product and I use it sort of as I see fit, which may or may not be how they intend it to be used. So we'll just get that one out of the way. If you see what I'm doing and it looks like it's wrong, you're probably right. <laughs> just let me know in the comments down below what I'm doing wrong um, so that I can ignore that and continue doing whatever I want. So I've got a series of images. We're just going to load them up here in Lightroom. Look at a couple of the things. Trip, and uh, look at a couple of the things that I use, um, just to prep files, soft proof, hard proof, and then the actual printing. So let's just jump right into it. What's up? So uh, here we are in piezography land. First things first. What is piezography, uh, and how is it pronounced? Uh, it, oh. <laughs> Long story short, I don't really know how to pronounce it. I pronounce it piezography. I went to their workshop that they had there and uh, they pronounced it many different ways as a staff of people and piezography is the one that I like that's easy. I also just call it piezo because I'm a barbarian, I guess. So piezography, so here's piezography. I've got their website up. What is it? Uh, so. In a nutshell, piezography is the highest quality and most archival digital black and white printing system ever invented. Finely calibrated hues, blah, 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 blah. I use the Piezography Pro ink set, which is warm, cool, and split tones. Uh, many more shades and nozzles than normal OEMs. Okay, so it's a black and white system that uses all of the channels on your printer for just different shades of gray and with those different shades of gray, you get way more detail. They're also using smaller droplets because an inkjet printer, right, it sprays ink on the paper, basically, yeah? Some inks use rather large droplets. Piezography is going to be using a significantly smaller droplet or whatever measurement of ink. So you get much, much finer detail. Um, so yeah, piezography is awesome. It it includes all kinds of cool things. Go check them out, piezography.com. Again, I'm not sponsored by them. I just use the damn stuff and it's so good. This is the Piezography Pro section of the website, which is just, I believe, as far as I know, just a regular, like an ink set that they developed that's really freaking good. Um, the pigment, new pigment, curve shaping technology, one million toning variations. An industry-leading D-Max, and D-Max, for those of you who don't know, is, is black. So we measure black, and we call it D-Max, and what we're looking for is the maximum amount of black, or the lowest reflectance that we're going to get. And so uh, piezography is blacker than most other blacks. Um, and they've got all these cool things, and the reason that I went with Piezography Pro is that you can split tone, which is incredible. So you can do like a standard neutral black and white, you can do a warm tone, a cool tone, or you can start split toning between those. So you can do warm neutral, warm neutral shadows, and cool neutral highlights. The neutral shadows warm highlights one really trips me out. It's like almost color, but not really. Super cool stuff. Uh, this is what got me into piezography to start with. And then from there, I learned that they do negatives as well. We're not talking about negatives today. Today, we're only talking about piezography prints as their own thing, not as a system to create something else, right? Not as a negative, just as a positive print, which is how I started with piezography to begin with. So um, you can get piezography from piezography.com or Inkjet Mall, which is the like um, shopping side of their business. Um, it's made by real human beings right here in the US of A, and they do really good stuff. So we're gonna get rid of this website Although, guys, uh, Piezography, uh, John Cohn and friends, if you're watching this, great new website. Walker killed it. Here's Lightroom. <coughs> Excuse me. It's the afternoon. I've been talking all day. 
coffee through a tiny straw. Um, so I've got a couple of images that I have been looking to make piezography prints of, but haven't really given myself the time and space to do that. And I figured this, this is a great time to start. So these uh, images are all super high quality, taken on industry leading cam, no, they were taken on my iPhone. Uh, <laughs> but there's nothing wrong with an iPhone photo, especially if you're not trying to go huge with your prints. Like I'm just trying to make little baby prints that I can either give away or have around the shop or just hang up for grins, right? So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna look at some of these files and we're gonna see what they look like in black and white. And then we're gonna talk about the soft proofing options that Piezography gives you by default, which are excellent. And then how we use those to get a feeling for how the image will look as an actual print, right? So first things first, we're gonna start with this beautiful image of my Intrepid camera set up in Joshua Tree. Um, it needs a little bit of work. Obviously at 300%, it does not hold up to anything at all. It's rather tragic. But at 100%, I mean, you know, it's an iPhone. It did a pretty good job. Um, there are a couple of changes that I'd probably make to this. But to start, let's just look at what it would look like in black and white. Not too bad, right? You might you might add a little bit of contrast. You might add like a, I don't know, like a, a linear f gradient for the sky get those clouds to do something interesting. Maybe that's a little too far. You know, we're, I'm, just, I'm just playing with it at this point, right? Just getting a feel for what the image does and doesn't really want me to do. And keep in mind that I'm editing a JPEG here. So <laughs> I don't really have all that much leeway to begin with. Now, if I was in Photoshop, I would come in here and brighten up the wood, basically the rails of the camera. We're gonna try that because we can and make a nice small brush with a huge boost. And we're just gonna come brighten these up real quick. Just I'm just looking for a little bit of detail on the camera. This is gonna be quick and dirty and that is okay. It's not gonna hurt us. Ooh, man, that hurts us. We don't want that. Mm. Whoa, that's a big eraser. Make that smaller. Just gonna erase my idiocy right back out of this flow. That's better. In Photoshop, I would do this like clean and beautiful and easy but this isn't Photoshop, so I'm stuck with what I got. That's like only a little terrible. Just the tiniest amount of <laughs> Right, but it gets the general idea across. Oh, you know what? What, what, what Lightroom's really gonna struggle with is removing this GoPro from the frame. This is something I would almost always do in Photoshop, but let's see what Lightroom's gonna give us here. We're just gonna remove most of this GoPro. That's not terrible. Close enough. I'm into it. Uh, nice, nailed it. Good job, Lightroom. So this would be kind of like my first rough cut at this image, right? Um, I'm showing my background border here as white because if we showed it as like a gray, it, it reads totally differently, but of course it's gonna go on white paper. So we're gonna do like a nice white border. It might've been light gray earlier. This is white, um, which works great for me. That feels really good. So that would be my starting point, right? Just to see like, does this work as a picture in black and white? And I'm gonna go, yeah, it totally does. I'm feeling it. A little bit of black's not gonna hurt you. And a little bit of highlight's not gonna hurt you neither. I do want, okay. This is what happens when, when, we're, when I hang out in whatever, a program. 
I end up just spending all my time working on a picture. So we're just going to brush in a little bit more oomph into the sky here. Not too much, just enough. Whatever. Right, say you like this. Say this is the answer and you say, okay, I'm ready to make a piezography print. How do I do that? What's it going to look like? So you want to be in the develop module and you've already downloaded all your software and things from piezography, which you get at piezography.com. They've got all this stuff you have to download. You have to have quad tone rip. You have to have a print tool. You have to have all this stuff. They have a, like a manual or whatever that walks you through that. But right now, I'm just talking about soft proofing. So in Lightroom, in the develop module, there's this little module called soft proofing. So I click this down here, and then there are profiles I get to choose from. So if I wanted to know what this would look like as a silver gelatin print, I would do that, which, surprise, surprise, it looks just like a regular, um, just like the, like, you know, there's very little difference between the soft proof and not soft proof, right? Because that's what silver's supposed to do. But let's say I wanted to do piezography matte neutral, which is going to be matte finish, which is how I do all of my piezography because I don't have the gloss ink set installed, and uh, reasonably neutral in terms of not too much warmth, not too much. Um, what is the word I'm trying to say? Not, it's not warm and not cool, it's right in the middle. Jesus, <clears throat> words are so hard. Um, so basically you're hanging out here and you're kind of looking at what this is gonna look like. And then you wanna see what changes between not soft proof, right? Just the edits that you've already made and what the soft proof is gonna do to it. Now I find that telling this thing to simulate paper and ink I can usually get something, this is, this is going to give me a low contrast experience. So I usually don't bother with simulate paper and ink, although I like to know what it thinks is going to happen. I think we're going to get a better black than this, but if it turned out with the simulate paper and ink checked, I'd be fine with that too. But if I knew it was going to turn out like that, what you can do is create a proof copy and start making edits to this that you'll only use when you print it. So you, you basically have, you have like the file that gets displayed on your website, right? Like, if I know the print is gonna turn out exactly like this, this is what goes on my website. And then I have a soft, or I have a proof copy that basically is the image that I have to print in order to achieve this, which sometimes is different. So, but anyway, so soft proofing, I feel pretty good about this. Uh, matte neutral is good. I generally prefer a warm neutral, which is ever so slightly warmer, you know. Ah, see, that's more like, that's, it's, it really, it's designed to mimic platinum palladium and does a fair job of it. So I think that is more or less where I would like to be, and I'd also be okay with that. Like, if you look at the contrast difference from no simulation to simulation, they're both good. I'd be happy with either one. The only thing I might do with, if I'm gonna keep this simulate paper and ink, is I might go ahead and burn this shadow down to really help anchor the image. And we can do that inside of this proof copy, which is awesome. You know, I could just take that black and nuke it. It says, hey, um, this allows you to blah, 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 blah. And you say, um, yeah, this can be my proof, that's fine. And then you nuke your black. And what this is showing me here, if I look here and I look on my histogram, this is raw black. So this is what the computer thinks is the deepest black that I can actually produce. And so given that, I think that this mask is probably worthless and we don't need it and we can just uh, make it go away. I'd be, I'd be fine with what this looks like. I'm into it. So soft proof gives me um, a reasonable idea of what this is gonna look like as a piezography print in black and white. Another thing that's left from there is to print it, right? You gotta see how this or this compares to the actual print being made. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna soft proof the rest of these real quick. I'll run a set of prints and then we can see what things actually look like and compare. So, next image, moving on. So I'm already, because I was in soft proofing, 
for my last image, this one has defaulted to include me in soft proofing already. Now I know this is too low contrast because if you look at it as a color image, again, taken on my very expensive top of the line iPhone 11, uh, not even close, right? So we know we're gonna need some contrast here. And I know, yes, make this a proof, that's fine. I already made virtual copies for each of these, so I'm just gonna work with this one here. I'm gonna go ahead and convert to black and white so that I know which which is which in my thumbnails. And that guy needs some snap. I like to start with a linear gradient just to make things interesting. And uh, I go pretty aggressive to start. And then we just dial it back from there. But this is what it felt like to be sitting there, you know, at dawn, basically, on my ride back from Joshua Tree. It was like this epic, almost apocalyptic feeling. And this, I think, is starting to approximate that. So I'm going to give myself another new mask. And we are going to brush down some of this. Holy crap, that was way too far. I'm just gonna brush some of this down a little, we'll get that flow down a little. Right, because we don't need some of that detail, just like we don't necessarily need some of this. Brush some of this down a little. And usually, guys, this is the kind of stuff that I would for sure do in Photoshop. I am a Photoshopper. I am not a Lightroom editor, but in the interest of time, we're going to go ahead and do these here, which is fine. It's just fine. I'm going too far here so that I can see my edits while Lightroom shits the bed. I keep hitting X instead of Option, which is really annoying. Yeah, just getting a feel for what's actually included here. Very interesting. We're going to get rid of this. We don't need it. Oh, I'm starting to get a feel for this. We're getting there. We're going to brighten up this bike a little. I want it to be dark, but not too dark. I want it to feel like it belongs. Option, not Alt. Sure, why not? Right, reasonable place to start. I could probably go for a little bit more contrast. Now, if we come out of soft proofing and look at it as a regular black and white, it's similar. The soft proof really, right now, without simulate paper and ink, is really just showing me the warmth that we're going to achieve. If I go ahead and add simulate paper and ink, it shows me the contrast range that it expects I will achieve. I honestly don't think it'll be this low contrast. I don't think it'll feel like that. I think it will feel more like this. There's that GoPro again. Little, little fucker. You know what? Yeah, that's fine for now. I'm into it. Uh, not the, my finest photography, but you know what? It's going to get there. So here's the image in color. Not particularly interesting. This is just one that, this is kind of a memory mostly for me. And I don't really give a damn if it's, uh, you know, good as a photograph. I'm just kind of, I'm just kind of feeling a certain vibe here. You'll have to forgive the terrible things that I'm doing to this image. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump into soft proof. Give me that, that uh, warm neutral vibe I'm looking for. So I'm gonna just, I'm going for a feeling here, right? It's not, this is not how this looked. It's, it's, just, it's just the way that it felt. So I'm gonna invert this and we are just gonna dump all the sharpness out of the outsides of this thing. Give ourselves a little bit of a vignette. Again, I'm just looking for a feeling. So 
Something like that. That feels pretty good. Okay, good. I love it. I'm into it. So let's look at soft proof. Again, I'm a matte, warm, neutral kind of guy. So that's how I want this to feel. This is pretty close. I love the contrast I'm getting in the leaves down here. Not sure if I've got quite enough, probably due to the shape of this mask, if I just bring this bad boy in a skosh, that might get me where I'm trying to go. Not half bad. Funny, the color overlay on the soft proof mode does not work. It looks terrible. But hey, what are you going to do, you know? Just trying to provide a little bit of contrast for myself, give it something to look at here. And we'll just dial that back a skosh. Nice. Why not? That looks like fine art. So. Uh, soft proof. I'm going to just go through each one of them real quick. So simulate and without simulate. I feel pretty good about either one of those. I'm into it. This one's for me, right? Same thing here. Simulate and without. This is probably the weakest of the bunch. I wonder if I could crop this if it would get... Looking up here to see how my crop preview feels. It takes a lot of the drama out of the sky and it reads very differently. Eh, maybe. And then this one, right? Much higher contrast. We're going we're really going for punch in this one. So, that is how I prep files for piezography. So, I'm going to open a program called Print Tool, which is what you use when you're printing with piezography, you'll notice my printers here are all named silly things. Uh, Gimli, who prints in positive, is who we're after today. And we're just gonna print these real small. I'm gonna hard proof on letter paper to start. That's generally the way that I like to do this. Make a small print, like on a eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. So like the print itself is eight by 10. Try that, see how it feels, live with it for a little while, and then go from there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through here and I'm gonna go ahead and set up my, you have to use quad tone rip as part of this program. I'm gonna go ahead and set up my curves for the correct paper that I'm gonna use. I'm gonna go ahead and use Canson Rag Photographique, which is my sort of standard. And I do a split between warm and neutral. I typically like an 80-20 or a 70-30 split. We'll do 70-30 today. Sheet feeds. Um, and I'm in a hurry today, so we're going to dial these back, and I'll be able to dial them back up when I decide to, like, go for it. I'm just going to go ahead and save these. This printer, warm, neutral. <coughs> so I hit save. It resizes the paper for me. And so what I need to do now is export these images from Lightroom. One, two, three as TIFFs, right? So we're gonna export these as TIFFs. I have this set to give me Adobe RGB 1998 16 bits at TIFFs. It says it's resizing, but it's really not gonna resize it and it's not gonna do anything after export. So I'm gonna go ahead and put these in a place just on the desktop here. Uh, TIFF fun YouTubes, open. We'll let Lightroom do its thing for 10 seconds. And then we'll go back to Print Tool. And I'll load each one of these images up one at a time and make prints. I'll just show this because we're here and we might as well. So TIFF on YouTube. So let's start with the best one first. I'm going to load it into Print Tool here. I'm just going to go ahead and resize it to something that makes sense so that it um, doesn't cut off the image. And I'm actually going to do standard letter instead of lettered centered letter 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 centered Ugh, whatever I'm into that let's call it 7 by 9.3 that's better um, we turn off our color management here that's super important 
when we're putting on the piezography printers. And these are JPEG, so I'm not going to worry about sending 16-bit data on these. And I'm not going to worry about high speed, resolution, whatever stuff. I'm just going to run it. So you'll see that this looks reasonably high contrast to start. Like almost too high contrast, which is kind of what we want. And now the printer kicks on and it sounds like an aircraft carrier is going. So we'll just um, come back to this when the image is finished. Sound good? Okay, so great success. I would say this print looks... Perfect. It's it's not quite as dark as it looks here. It's not. Oh man, that's tough. I'd say it's between the two, actually. I think this looks like between simulate paper and ink and not simulating paper and ink, if that makes any sense. It's close. The detail on the rocks is incredible, actually, but the, the contrast range is kind of between the two, is what it feels like in this light, right? Which is just tragic, random top-down lights in my office. but. Yeah, that's it. That's that's how you prep a file for piezography and know more or less what it's going to look like. It's close. If I go out and put this in proper gallery light, it would probably look brighter, more like I have simulate paper and ink checked. And if I'm in what I would call kitchen light, like sort of like shadowed terrible light, it looks more like I don't have simulate paper and ink checked. It looks like it's higher contrast with deeper blacks. So it really depends on the light that you're looking at the print in. But yeah, I mean, that's it. That's how you do it, that's how you prep it. I'm gonna do a couple more of these because we're here and we might as well. And it's really easy. All I have to do is find where those images are, drag and drop to replace them. We'll do the not motorcycle one next here. So you just drag and drop. We said we were doing these seven inches. Get rid of the first one. And then hopefully, saved all my settings which it has and I just hit print and of course there's this cool new feature <laughs> where Epson printers freak out on Apple operating systems and you have to tell it that this print job which is the one we just made it says it stopped and it's failed that's not true it printed fine so now all I have to do is load a sheet of paper and we're set Love it. Excellent. Beautiful. Crushing it. Anyway, um, don't mind the uh, aircraft carrier taking off. That's pretty much how you do it. That's printing in piezography. It's really not that hard. It's just tough enough uh, that like getting it set up is kind of a pain and it's a little difficult. But once you get it set up, and you understand how your profiles work and where your printers live and what, what they're really going to look like and how to deal with the color management, you're set. Yeah, if you've got a printer that you need to convert to piezography, you can do it yourself. Uh, only certain printers are accepting, are capable of accepting piezography inks. They've got a list on their website. There are links below. Go check them out. And uh, if you want me to make some piezography prints for you, uh, there's a video that kind of talks about how to do that. So go check that out over here. Until then, we'll see you in the next one.